These are the welcoming waters and beautiful beaches of a South Pacific paradise. Hello, I'm Doug McConnell, and we have an extraordinary journey ahead into the splendors of nature and humanity along remote back roads we'll never forget in the islands of Fiji. We'll travel to remote villages few outsiders have ever seen. We'll take a seaplane through a tropical storm, a back road until it disappears and a trail through the rainforest to find the grand generosity of the Fijian people. We'll also come face to face with the technicolor delights of Fiji's coral reefs and discover that nature is being nurtured here for generations to come. tropical oasis in the South Pacific. The world's friendliest people and uh, one of the world's most beautiful places, an unbeatable combination. Fijians live by the spirit of Bula Vanaka. Hello and welcome. I mean, the curiosity and the warmth is, is purely from their heart. They really are genuinely interested in who you are as an individual. In Fiji's traditional villages and around its comfortable resorts, the people's warm embrace is matched by nature's. Lush tropical rainforests and palm-lined beaches shimmer above the sea. And its brilliant coral reefs teem with life. Every little level, every, every little microscopic scene. level, there's Absolutely. something happening out there. Absolutely, and on the other, other side... Oh, wow. These wonders of nature and these wonderful people live together in a fragile balance, now beginning to be fully understood and protected. All those things, for me, it's quite amazing. Fiji's natural beauty and its ways of life can teach us overwrought visitors quite a bit about the values of relationships and community. I've been over-civilized. This is, this is, you know, I think this is what God put us on the world to behave like. When you come, come with an open mind and come with an open heart and you you'll won't regret it. Fiji is located about 5,500 miles southwest of San Francisco. It's a ten and a half hour non-stop flight from Los Angeles to Fiji's International Airport in Nandi. Fiji is a nation made up of 322 islands. On our journey, we travel north from Nandi to the island of Vanuulevu to stay at the Jean-Michel Cousteau Fiji Islands Resort, which is our base camp during the trip. The native people of Fiji first came to these islands about three and a half thousand years ago. Now, we outsiders once considered them to be fierce warriors. Now we know them to be among the friendliest people in all of the Pacific. Now, we came here with an equally friendly group of people from an international organization based in the Bay Area, the Psychology Foundation. Psychology is the world's premier uh, nonprofit organization whose sole focus is preserving island environments and cultures throughout the globe. Dwayne Silverstein is the executive director of the Psychology Foundation. On this trip, he's joined by members of his board of directors and other supporters to see how projects they're backing are doing in Fiji. They're helping one village protect its threatened rainforest and another its endangered coral reef. Psychology has formed relationships with these villages. The foundation provides resources that the villages need, and in return, the villagers protect their natural environments. We're not sitting in an office in the United States saying, here's what you should have or here's what you should do to save the environment. People are often the missing equation. 
And we want to make sure islanders who are sacrificing a tremendous amount on behalf of the environment get some tangible gains for doing so. We are missing all those, all those our native trees. Now that's why I want to save something for my kids. Sikology's Fijian representative is Saola Fondanaivalu, Jr. I think that is one of the most important projects that Sikology has funded because it managed to convince the other villages to start keeping their marine life. Saola will guide us to Sikology's rainforest and reef projects. And just getting to the reef is half the fun. We take a two-hour seaplane trip from Vanua Levu to the southern part of the Fijian chain to visit the remote village of Waisomo. Our journey begins at first light. Our quarters are tight, but the vistas are immense of uninhabited islands, of one of the world's longest barrier reefs, and a productive Fijian farmland as we cruise over the main island of Vitilevu. Then a tropical squall clouds the horizon and puts our pilot dusty in blind pursuit of our destination. Fortunately, Saula knows the landmarks and pretty soon is able to point out Waisomo Village along a thin strand of beach down below. The skies may not have been friendly, but the people of Waisomo surely are. Nice to meet you. Give me. Smile. Gracious villagers flank us on all sides, curious to see our camera equipment, and visit with their guests from Seacology. So you guys uh, out of school today? It's a Saturday, huh? Sixty families live in this isolated village. They survive on farming, <coughs> selling seashells, and fishing. But they decided to stop fishing in seven square miles of their nearby reef to protect its vulnerable ecosystem. It's a great sacrifice for them, but it's a gift they're giving proudly to future generations in the village. In true Fijian fashion, we're welcomed in traditional ways and with great dignity. We're given kava, a traditional drink made from a native root that's given to honored guests. Oh. One of the village chiefs, Yokimi Nakelavuki, speaks on their behalf. I think this is the biggest, biggest uh, gift ever given to us from the, world, from the time we were uh, small until now. It's time to see what Seacology is giving to Waisomo in exchange for protecting the reef. Seacology is funding the construction of a new and much needed community center. Thank you very much, Seacology. This new boat has also been provided by Seacology and we'll use it to see the coral reef sanctuary up close. The protected reef is a tribute to Yokimi's late brother. It must make you feel awfully proud. Uh, uh, we're proud of ourselves and we're proud of you people coming right from America. The project is apparently inspiring three neighboring villages to protect their own portions of the reef. This would be one of the biggest marine parks in the world. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Hope is becoming a reality here. And so are relationships that should stand the test of time. Stay with us for a journey to an isolated village few outsiders have ever seen. But coming up next, we'll explore the colorful, natural wonders of Fiji.
first group of outsiders in history ever to visit this village. Think of that, Doug. There are very few places in the world that you can go to and be the first uh, outsider to visit. As our time in Fiji slips away, we prepare to take a journey back in time to a mountain village that's had very little outside contact. Uh, just say a lot of vanaka, vanaka vakulevu, that means thank you very much, and do what you're doing now, just smile. That's the universal language. And there's quite a bit to smile about. The village of Nandongo is celebrating a new environmental project they're launching with the help of the Psychology Foundation. In Ndango village, the villagers are trading off the permanent protection of 2,000 acres of pristine rainforest, and in return, Psychology is helping uh, grade the road. The road is impassable and people are sick. It takes five hours to get medical care. Nandango will protect the health of its rainforest and Psychology will help protect the health of the village by improving Nandango's lifeline to the outside world. From the Cousteau Resort on the island of Anualevu, we drive northeast four hours to the island's interior. Then we hike a couple more hours to reach Nandango. We start out shortly after daybreak. So it's early morning, about, about 5, well, it's 6.30. And uh, we got a ways to go, about four hours. Um, and the road's going to get bumpy. And it does. We dodge a few boulders. Oh! And unpaved strips of roadway before driving through Savu Savu, the main city in these parts. We pass big vistas, little communities, and farmlands surrounded by forest. In the last few miles, the road which Psychology will help smooth turns very rough and finally gives out. People from Nandango meet us and guide us towards the village. Many of our Fijian hosts walk barefoot, unfazed by the rigors of the hike. So, Claudia, how do you feel about this so far? Oh, this is fun. <laughs> <laughs> we outsiders do our best to keep up in the wilting tropical heat. So what's your uh, sense of the journey we've had so far today? Oh, it's been... <laughs> A lot of anticipation, you know, thinking about, uh, heard about the river crossings, and uh, that's, that's pretty fun. We encounter some difficult crossings and climb many hills, but the scenery is spectacular. And after five or six miles, a cool river leads to a path into the village. Well, you look very fresh. It looks like you haven't hiked for two and a half hours. Oh, it's been wonderful. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? What's even more amazing is the unforgettable reception we now receive from the people of Nandango. Hello. Hello. I'm Lucena. I'm Doug. Nice to meet you. Hello. Hello. I'm Lucena. Hello. 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 They've prepared an extraordinary ceremony to celebrate the rainforest, the road, and their relationship with psychology. Words are not enough to express our sincere gratitude for your presence which is a ray of hope and comfort to us. Mbose Ngalo and members of 13 families live here, surviving by farming vegetables and the kava root. <laughs> Cutting the forest would give the villagers valuable short-term income. Protecting it is a sacrifice they're making for the long-term survival of their community. I thank the Lord that through his divine guidance, this meeting has been made possible. After some ceremonial kava, the festivities begin. A feast is served, many dances are danced, and a special song is sung. Friends who are so dear. 
true to the Fijian spirit, everybody has a grand time. Including Bay Area native Paul Felton. You look to me as if you were almost in tears when, when that was finished. It's so pure. It's embarrassing. Oh, we're not pure anymore. I just these people are just so remarkable. It's, I'm, I am humble. In Nandango and throughout Fiji, we were all humble, and we had a fabulous time, graced by the beauty of the place and the generosity of the people. <laughs>